coming in. His mom is Sister Terry. Y'all know Sister Terry. But there's a shooting in Hartsville this weekend. And um, as Desmond, in Desmond's words, it's one of the few places that college students have to hang out. If you know anything about Hartsville, it's one of the few places that um, college students have the opportunity to hang out. But it was a retaliation um, shooting. And um, the, the target um, did pass away. But the guy who came in shooting, several other people were hurt um, in that shooting. There are at least two people. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. There's at least two people who were um, deceased from that shooting, um, late night shooting last night. So please, keep, please, please, please. And I ask you to please pray for um, the people who are deceased, the person who did the shooting. I also pray for Desmond. As Desmond was there, and 30 minutes before the shooting started, he started noticing like the erratic behavior of a young lady who, um, who kind of got this whole thing started. Um, she kept going in and out, in and out, in and out of the club, and he said something's not right. He told his mother this morning, um, about 2, two o'clock this morning, he was talking to her. He said, something told me to leave. Y'all know what that something is. He said, something. You've been in a situation like that, sister. He said, something told me to leave. But this is what, this is what we're praying for also because Desmond, he's a lacrosse player. He plays lacrosse there. He looked over at his teammate, and he said to his teammate, um, man, I'm getting out of here. Are you going to leave with me? And his teammate said no. So keep his teammate in prayer as he was shot in the head and is in the hospital in Florence. He's in Florence in the hospital. This teammate is from Maryland. So he, he, he's a little shaken up because he realizes that it could have been. It could have been. And so many of our young people um, are experiencing, and not so young people, or have that phenomenon when you're out and you're just trying to have a good time and something goes wrong. And somebody right beside you, <laughs> something like that happens to them. And it, and it does, um, it begins to mess with your mind. So we, we're going to pray um, this morning and we're going to make sure that we pray and cover Desmond, cover all of those students in that area, cover the parents who are now having to fly from Maryland um, to get to South Carolina, to get to Florence, um, to be with their child. So I ask you to just um, to keep all of them, keep all of them in your prayer. And, and, and there may be a name or there may be someone or some name that I did not call this morning. Um, of course, pray for Master Kyle, Kyle Robinson in the sick and shut in room back here. Um, pray for Kyle this morning. My husband and I, we kept looking around and we were like, this is the most interesting case of the flu that we've ever seen. As Kyle does not have any symptoms, he just kept jumping around, bouncing around, no symptoms. And then this morning we were like, oh, there it is. <laughs> but he's still, if you ask Kyle back here now, um, no fever's broken. He's doing fine. He's sitting up. I bought his pillow. I brought his um, blanket off to make him a cot to lay down. He won't lay down. He said, I'm fine, mommy. I'm just fine, but uh, we're going to play. That's Kyle. We're going to pray the blood of Jesus over Kyle um, still in Jesus' name. So keep, continue to keep him continue to keep him in your prayers. Um, if I can just let that device stay in his hand, he's all right. So we're going to pray. Um, before our kids, and we're going to bring the kids back up and sing, but I'm going to ask all of you to just stand with me, and I want the kids to come stand right here. Um, if you are 18 and younger, I want you to just come stand right here. I don't believe in waiting. If I said do all this and let's pray for all these people, I want to pray for them now. So let's stand right here. We're just going to do a word of prayer for our, our youth from the door. Everybody come. And I just need you to stretch forth your hand um, with me and just pray for our children and our young adults in the name of Jesus. And Sister Tara is not here, but Dion, can y'all come and stand in for, for Desmond and um, Tara, his mom? I, I don't know if she's going to make it today, but can y'all come and stand in the gap for her as we pray for um, as we pray for, for Desmond? Come on, Mark. I don't know how you always find yourself out there. Come on, son. Oh, gosh. Oh. Let us pray. God, we thank you right now. God, we thank you for our children. We thank you for their life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for not just our children, children, these young children that are in front of us, 
But God, even our college students who are in this room and our college students who are afar. Last week when we were praying and we were at this altar, God, you had of their own free will every college student that was in this room come to this altar of their own free will and to receive your healing and your deliverance and to experience your power. And God, this morning, I ask you that same power, oh God, that you allow it to continue to run from heart to heart, oh God, from person to person. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We pray for not just our children, but those members who are in the hospital who've been in the hospital we thank you for their healing right now in jesus name we know that your word says by your stripes we are healed so we thank you for healing in the name of jesus we thank you oh god that you stand in the midst of us we pray for every young boy every young girl who may think that picking up a gun is the answer oh god right now we pray against gun violence and stop this senseless shooting that is going on in our world oh god lord we pray for the parents or the grandparents are the godparents who may have a child who they feel that is gone astray help them not to give up not to throw in the towel but to continue to pray for that child and god we pray for those of us whether we have children or don't have children that we're not selfish that we reach out into the community and that we mentor that we model that we take care of somebody else's child so that they will see the way in which they are to go god we pray for young Desmond and we pray for his teammate Garrett. We pray for Garrett's family who's traveling from Maryland to come and see about their child, oh God. We pray for the, for the young lady and unfortunately the beating that she had to endure and pray, oh God, for her mind and her mental health that she's called these other people to come into a crowded building to take care of somebody on her behalf, oh God. Lord, we pray for the shooters. We pray for everybody involved in this situation at Coca College, but not just that college. Colleges across America, oh God, touch our children. They need healing. They need to hear from you, Father God. They need to hear from you. We thank you for it now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray and call it all done. Amen. Amen and amen. And it is done. If you believe that it is done, if you believe that it is done, if you believe that it is done, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, children. Come on, children. If you believe that it is done. Yeah, we are learning to walk up the steps. Oh, be careful. Be careful. I need you to sing this now. We're learning. We're learning. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna. 
Amen. Thank you, Sister Alicia. And, and my and my teens and my preteens are like, okay, now, Pastor, we we're singing too. So so we need more help, more work, because then we need you got the little songs, but we need the songs that the older teens, the older kids would like to sing as well. So y'all keep praying, y'all keep praying, y'all keep sewing, and we're gonna keep doing what God has called us to do. Offering. Lord, I thank you, God, I thank you for the seed and my willingness to sow. I'm putting in good ground, and I know that it will grow. I don't give to receive a blessing, but I'm blessed to be able to give. And I'm thanking you every day for the abundant life I live. You can give by website at mountolivonthehill.com. You can, you 
can you can go to our website. You can text my olive A and me, and you can cash up us at at Mount Olive on the Hill. Yes, that we all stand. God, we just say thank you. We thank you for the givers. God, we thank you for the givers of the seed that are going to be planted into this place. And God, we ask that you flourish, oh God. We ask that you rain down on these gifts. So God, that we may plant here at Mount Olive on the hill as we grow on the top of the hill, oh God. And so God, we ask that you continue to be with us, continue to strengthen us, oh God, and continue to give us more funds to give more. And God, we just say thank you, oh God, as you replenish our pockets, oh God, that we may be able to pour back into your house. And God, we just glorify you. We give you all the honor and glory. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Okay, so we have the privilege and honor of introducing um, our speaker today, Hamilton Grant. He is a graduate of Rich Northeast High School, South Carolina State University, and Alabama A&M University. Um, he has his MBA, and he works with our father with Grant Business Advisors. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Hamilton is currently running for Richland County, um, County Council District 8, and, and we are very excited. You can go to his website, www.grantforsc.com, and you can follow him on all social media platforms at Grant for SC. He and his wife, Alana, are expecting their first child in May, and after a song, you'll be hearing from Halton. Yes.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Truly, it is an honor and a privilege to stand before you this morning um, to be with family. It's good to see everybody. Uh, thank my sisters, Christina and Catherine, for being nice to me. <laughs> I'll send you a cash app later for that. Uh, but no, it, truly, it, it is an honor to be here uh, with each and every one of you and uh, to be with my big brother and big sister, Marcus and uh, Sharendria Robinson. Uh, we've been trying to schedule this thing for quite some time, and it's always the, the schedules don't ever sync up, but I think God allowed us to be here today uh, for a reason. Um, the first family of this church means so much, I know, to every one of us, but uh, personally for us, um, they do so much um, for everyone. Uh, they stand in the gap, they pray, um, they're always there, um, and in a time to where the White House can daily show us what bad leadership looks like, um, I'm so glad at Mount Olive we have a front row seat to what good leadership looks like. So would you help me in applauding the first family, Marcus, Sharendra, I know she's back there with Kyle, Caleb, and Mark. Um, we thank them so much for all uh, that they do. Um, my wife, Alana, sends her love and uh, greetings this morning uh, in her absence. She's uh, ministering at uh, another church. She plays uh, on certain Sundays the piano at another church. So that's why she is not here. But keep her in prayer. As the twins said, we are expecting our first son uh, in May. And so we are excited about that. I want to give a big shout out to all of the youth for leading us in uh, ministry this morning. Now, when pastor called and said it was uh, youth day, I kind of struggled because I wanted to make sure uh, that I had a message that would cross uh, the young to the young at heart, <laughs> which can be a challenge sometimes. But, you know, I kind of think one of the things that we all struggle with, no matter what our age is, is maturity. In that you can still be grown and immature. Right? And we all know somebody like that. So we're in church. Indulge me this morning. Elbow your neighbor and repeat my subject. Say, neighbor. Grow up. Do it again. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Grow, up. grow up. In 1948, a young entrepreneur by the name of Charles Lazarus opened a baby furniture store in Washington, D.C. The store was entitled Children's Bargain Town, aimed to be the one-stop shop for Americans returning from World War II who were looking to start families. Lazarus knew that these families needed somewhere to stock up on nursery decor, so, marketed, so he marketed uh, the store as such. Not long after the launch of his furniture store, as most entrepreneurs often do, Charles Lazarus had an aha moment. Lazarus discovered that the real money was not in cribs, but it was in toys. He realized that toys break and go out of style, which consequently causes parents to visit the store frequently. He had found the perfect recipe business owners know as supply and demand. By 1957, Lazarus completely rebranded his company and had successfully opened his first store, modeled after a supermarket. 
What made this store so unique and different was that this store was shelved with just toys. The name of the store's mar marquee no longer read Children's Bargain Town, but instead it read Toys R Us. The next decades proved their business model to be a winning one. In the 1970s, the world was introduced to the playful, energetic giraffe by the name of Jeffrey. Jeffrey's tall and gigantic figure represented the store's huge selection in toys. By 1978, the company had gone public and almost instantly became a favorite on Wall Street. By the 80s, they brought another level of success to the company. Not only did the LA Times call Toys R Us one of New York Stock Exchange's hottest stocks, but the company rolled out their iconic jingle that people still remember today. The lyrics to the song were, I don't want to grow up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. Some of y'all still remember that. <laughs> Riding on the huge waves of success, the company CEO Charles Lazarus told the Washington Post in an interview in the 80s, and I quote, what we are is a supermarket for toys. We don't have any competitor in variety. There is none. Also in the 80s, Toys R Us was known in the corporate world of its sophisticated use of computers. The company was one of the first ones to know what their customers were buying by tracking the items sold with computers. What this did was help the store identify hot selling items weeks before their competitors did. As if Toys R Us couldn't get any hotter, Lazarus started stocking his stores with a variety of, how, or a variety of baby products, such as diapers and formulas, so that shoppers would have a reason to shop at their stores year-round rather than during the holiday season when toys were purchased the most. Ronnie, after experiencing all of the growth and success in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, they started to peel back layers of the company that, did not, that they did not anticipate. In 1994, founder and CEO Charles Lazarus stepped down from the company, bringing major culture changes throughout the corporation. Despite the major change within the company, the biggest change came in the form of a super company named Walmart. Walmart started to offer lower prices on diapers and baby products, creating a wider selection in the market for consumers. So Rob, while Toys R Us remained number one, the number one destination for gifts during the holidays, it has lost its regular shoppers during the rest of the year. The completely changed, this completely changed the game. Toys R Us made several attempts to gain their core market back by opening a flagship store located in Times Square, New York, and partnering with other companies, but the cost of doing all of this buried the once popular store. Um, early in 2015, Toys R Us had closed several stores, including the iconic Times Square flagship. And after a disastrous 2017 holiday season, the store was on life support. After filing for bankruptcy, the store indicated that it would run out of cash in the United States by May of 2018. In March of 2018, CEO David Brandon pulled the plug announcing on a conference call with the employees that they were going to close all of his stores and that everything was up for sale. Many of us in the room cannot recall a, childhood, a great childhood memory with, that did not involve Toys R Us. Throughout the span of 60 plus years, we've had a front row seat to the gigantic success and even a bigger failure. Many have speculated and have written about what exactly led to the company's failure. Some say it was when CEO Charles Lazarus stepped down. Some have indicated that it was opening the Times Square store that cost the companies millions. But ironically, Toys R Us failed because of what they had prophesied in the 80s in their famous company jingle. The company simply never grew up. Because Toys R Us never evolved with the changing of the times in consumer retail, Amazon and Walmart had completely wiped them out because they were smart enough to take advantage of what Toys R Us created, which was the blueprint to using computers to cultivate the market. Ladies and gentlemen, some of us will never ever reach our God-ordained potential if we don't simply ever grow up. Even vacation Bible school dropouts know the scripture found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, 
I understood as a child and I thought as a child. But when I became a man or I became a woman, I put away childish things. Some of us will forever remain in the same sick and tired situations we find ourselves in until we make up in our minds to put away childish things. There are three quick lessons, and I'll be out your way, that we can learn from Toys R Us. The first lesson that they uh, made, they made the mistake of thinking that they had no competition. The reason some of us don't sustain the level of success that we desire is because we think we're the only ones doing it. A writer once said, in order to separate yourselves from others, you must be dependable, dynamic, and different. It doesn't matter how fly you are or halfway cute you are or how many degrees you hold. If you don't constantly reevaluate yourself and stay aware of your market or your field or your calling, you'll get stuck and you'll get left behind. The arrogance of thinking nobody can touch you will lead you to my next lesson, which is getting exposed. Toys R Us was so used to being on top of the mountain that they neglected to do things that would sustain them. Because they failed to plan for a future, their weakness was exposed. One of the worst things that can happen to a perceived leader is them getting exposed because they lack the experience to lead. I'll say that again. One of the worst things that can happen to a perceived leader is them getting exposed because they lack the experience to lead. While I love my generation, and I'm so glad you're here with me today, and I take pride in being a millennial, one of our biggest problems is that we fight and take positions and titles before we're ready. So because we're in love with the attention that things bring and not work uh, that it takes to sustain and keep it, we get exposed because our lack of experience. One of the things that I've learned is that one thing is one thing to challenge certain leaders and criticize decisions that some make until you have to sit in the seat of leadership and make a similar decision. Situations will come to test your foundation and your core, and if, you're all, if all you're worried about is being on top, getting the most likes on Instagram, or going viral, you will get exposed. And once you're exposed, people look and treat you completely different. The third lesson, and I'll be out your way, is that we can learn from Toys R Us that after hitting rock bottom, we still have value. I'll say that again. The third lesson that Toys R Us uh, teaches us is that after hitting rock bottom, you still have value. If you recall that in March of 2018, Toys R Us had pulled its plug and went out of business, but what I failed to tell you was that there were millions of consumers that still had Toys R Us gift cards. Stores such as Michael's, Kmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, Sears, and other stores allowed consumers to use their purchased Toys R Us gift cards to use as rewards for their own companies. This is powerful because the once deemed as the, the company Toys R Us that was once deemed as, as worthless, others saw value in what they had. My brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how bad life may get, you still have value. You still have a purpose, you still have something the world needs from you, and you are still special. I'll say that again, you still have value, you still have purpose, and you still are special. Oftentimes we find ourselves in situations we may think are unredeemable, but we come to realize that the lesson in that difficult time is what pushes us to grow up. If you're like me, I'm grateful for every rough lesson that I had to learn, whether somebody did me wrong or whether it was my own fault. I'm grateful because even though it didn't feel good, it was for good. If you've ever been to the gym or if you haven't been in a while like me, after a few days of working out, your body becomes extremely sore. Some, while some are caught in the pain of being sore and get completely turned off from ever going back to the gym, those of you who work out frequently and understand that the pain is a good thing because in order for your muscles to get stronger, they have to go through a process of ripping. That's where the phrase, no pain, no game, comes from. So before you get to experience success, you've got to endure some pains. If you're not too saved and stuck up, you'll remember that Frankie Beverly had a song that said, joy and pain is like sunshine. Now sing it by yourself, joy. When we mature and grow up, everybody won't like or appreciate it. 
But as long as you keep your eyes on the prize and constantly work at bettering yourself, God will reward you as long as you stay in his will. So for the last time today, I want you to indulge me and again, repeat my subject. Neighbor, Neighbor. Grow, up. grow up. I'm Hamilton Grant. I approve this message. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. I want you to stand right here, Hamilton Grant. I, I, I approve that message as well. Is that okay? I, I, I approve that message as well. Uh, oh, thank you for the photo op. All right. I, re, I, I approve that message as well. I thank God for you. Um, and it's only been since October 2017 that I've been trying to get you to come here and preach, so it's okay. But now that you're here, even though you're without your bride, I'm asking you to stand in the gap for her. And um, I just want to hold your right hand. I just want to shake your right hand. Because what I can say is, um, as we look at the world that we live in and all that is going on from the White House to county, city, town council, it's difficult to find people, especially young people, especially older people, especially all people who have integrity and desire to do well, not just for themselves, but desire to help someone else. So as I grip your right hand today, I'm praying that God will continue to strengthen you, that God will continue to empower you that you won't get distracted and you won't lose focus that your heart will always belong to God and that you will always do what's right for the people that you realize that your your future your legacy your namesake is so much greater than you <laughs> in this moment I can't help but think about when I accepted the call to preach and when I accepted the call to preach, my presiding elder was the presiding elder, the late Willie J. Nelson, your grandfather. And I remember the words and that he poured into me and how he encouraged me. And, and the thing I like most about him is that he called a spade a spade. And I remember sitting in a worship service where a man had stood up to preach and he'd done horribly. And my friends and I, as young students in the ministry, we looked because every time someone gets up to preach the person who comes up behind them say they thank you for doing a good job and we say well what is Reverend Nelson going to say and, and for me it was a test because I'm like is this man real you know I'm just going into this and, and he stood up and he said well I never heard anything like that before <laughs> This was a man who had the word doctor in front of his name when he was preaching to us. Doctor, and I'm not going to say his name. But Reverend Nelson, presiding elder Nelson, stood up. And he said, I never heard anything that, like that before. And he said, brother, we'll keep praying for you. He told the truth when in that moment it wasn't popular to tell the truth. I bring that story up because you're going to be in situations where it's not going to be popular to tell the truth. You're going to be in situations where it's, it's going to be popular to just say what everybody wants you to say. And as you stand on your grandfather's shoulders, you have to say what's right. God is going to convict you if you don't. You have to say what's right and you have to always do the right thing. So in the name of Jesus, I thank God for you. I thank him for continuing to bless you. I thank him that he is blessing your bride and your baby to be your God. I think that God will continue to pour out his blessings on you so that you will realize that you're not just blessed because of your legacy and because of the, your heritage and the name that you're carried, but you're blessed to be a blessing to others. And I thank you right now, God, that every time he opens his mouth to speak, that he will speak truth to power, that he will speak under the anointing and under the authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he will say what it is that God, only you, God, has for him to say. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. I ask you to grab somebody's hand this morning. Grab somebody's hand this morning as we prepare to leave. Grab somebody's hand. I don't know whose hand Mark is coming to grab, but somebody grab it. Grab somebody's hand. I think that's Miss Frazella. Grab somebody's hand. I need everyone standing. Everyone standing. Let us pray. God, I thank you for everyone that is in this place this morning. God, we all stand in need of prayer for one thing or another. From the youngest person in here to the oldest person, oh God, you know the needs that we have. Meet our need, Father God, is our prayer. Hear our prayer, oh Lord. Hear our prayer, oh Lord. As we offer up our prayer request to you, God, offer it up to him now, wherever you are. If we offer up our prayer request to you, oh God, we thank you that your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Father God, that your word says, that your word says, oh God, where we are weak, that you are strong. We thank you that your word says that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Your word says, let this mind that be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. So take control of our mind. We thank you right now, oh God, for being a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Take control of our mind oh God we thank you that these the people that are under the sound of my voice where there is anxiety where there is depression where there is grief where there is heartache where there is pain where there is poverty where there is foreclosure oh God where there is job termination God we ask that you stand in the midst of us get in the midst of our situation and we thank you for turning around in the name of Jesus we thank you for deliverance in the name of Jesus we thank you for healing in the name of Jesus. Heal us, oh God. Now I ask, I ask right now, church, I'm talking to you, church. I ask that quietly you will, you will pray for the hand that you're holding. This now, now don't say anything about yourself, but pray for that person. If, if it's somebody on your right and somebody on your left, offer up a prayer unto God for the hand that you're holding. Pray to God right now. Pray to God right now. Pray for somebody else right now. We thank you, God, for being the source of our strength and the strength of our life. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for the hand that we hold. We thank you, oh God, that the hand that we hold, oh God, has every need that's been being met for them in the name of Jesus. We thank you that the hand that we hold it will write under the anointing and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that the hand that we're holding will be able to touch their children, their grandchildren, their friends, their loved ones, and they will be able to speak power. We thank you that the hand that we're hold will be able to write excellent papers that will receive an A grade. We thank you that the hand that we hold will be able to do community service. We thank you that the hand that we hold will We'll be able to touch the hand of another young child or teach them how to write their name and write their numbers. We thank you that the hand that we hold will feed a nation, not just feed them physical food, but feed them spiritual food. We thank you that the hands that we hold will be able to lay carpet, lay towel, change oil, fix, change out light bulbs. We thank you, oh God, that the hand that we hold will be able to cut down trees and manicure lawns and plant flowers. We thank you, oh God, that the hand that we hold will be able to play instruments, the keyboard, the drums, the guitar, the God, we thank you for the hand that we hold. It's anointed. It's blessed. It's empowered to create nice graphic designs, clip art, to create works of art on the computer, on with pen and paper, to be able to take fabulous pictures, to be able to create websites. God, we thank you for the hand that we hold. Bless us now, God. 
is our prayer. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray and call it all done. Amen. 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 If you don't know Jesus this morning, come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If you don't know Jesus this morning, I invite you to get to know him. We can't just come here, have a good message, serve our kids, and praise our kids, and not know Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus, I invite you to come this morning. He's the best friend I've ever had. Amen. If you're looking, if you're searching, if you're searching for a church home, I invite you to come this morning. There are people here who would love to serve you. Amen. Well, as we prepare to leave this place, as we prepare to leave this place, I have a prayer request. And I want to leave it with you this morning. This morning, my prayer request is that you, first I just ask you to look around the room. And you've seen these children that we're serving and there's so many more who aren't even here this morning there are children in this community that we serve there are children on college campuses that we serve and in order to do the work that God has called us to do because y'all know God gives you a vision that's bigger than you if the vision is not bigger than you, then you, I, I ask, is it from God? So God has given us something bigger. So my prayer request is that when you leave this place today, that you will tell somebody about Mount Olive on the Hill. Just think, it's Mount Olive and it's on a hill. Our website is mountoliveonthehill.com. Our cash app is Mount Olive on the Hill. Our Instagram, our Facebook, and our Twitter is Mount Olive on the Hill. We are trying to do something that is unprecedented here. My prayer request is that you ask somebody else to help us. You know the slang slogan, just give me five. Come on, give me five. Give me five. My prayer request is that you will go out and tell somebody about Mount Olive on the Hill and just ask them to give us five. Because if you got 5,000 Facebook friends and they all give me five, you do the math. And then if you got five Facebook friends, 5,000, Facebook friend. Lord knows he got 5,000 Facebook friends. I don't have 5,000. You got 5,000 Facebook friends. My prayer and my request is that you ask somebody else, all those, to give me five. MountOliveOnTheHill.com or cash out Mount Olive on the Hill so that we can make a difference. It's a simple, it's a simple request. You just say, hey, how you doing? Hey, give me five. Hey, five. Starbucks costs four dollars and how much change? Give me, give me that five. <laughs> just one day. I'm not even asking you to give me the five every week. You can, but just, just, just to give me five. That's my prayer request. That you tell somebody else. I can't tell. I can tell all the three thousand friends I got on Facebook. But if you ask somebody else in your church, in your communities, to give us. That's my prayer request. And if you notice today, I'm not even asking you for the five. I'm not doing a special offering, another offering. I'm not asking you for that. And I know you'll be led to do it. But I'm not asking you for that. I'm asking you to ask somebody else, a lot of somebody else's, to give us five. Amen. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Thank you again to our parents. We can't do it without the parents. Give a round of applause for our parents, our youth advisors, our ministers. And our speaker this morning, God, we thank you. Now, God, bless these, your people. Bless your children and keep them, oh God. Keep our children from the hand of the person who means them no good, the drug dealer, the gangbanger, the molester, the bully. Keep them safe is our prayer. Keep us all safe as we're all children of God. Bless us and keep us, oh God, as we leave this place. But never from your presence. It's in the matchless name of Jesus we pray and call it all done. Amen. 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 God bless you and have an amazing day. Um, uh, 
I want to make sure I get a picture, um, Asa, with our...